Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Dreamed of clouds. Great long fluffy bastards. Low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss. In the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. A good day to you, my love. And a good day to you, too. Are we in New England? <sighs> Welcome to America. Something's bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. And we shall charge him double. <sighs> I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. I'll be careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. Come on, Atea, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider our lovers, Antea and Red, the greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many entangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all to haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. If this is June, I'd hate to see January. I'd wanted to freeze my backside off in the summertime. I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. It's cold as a bishop's arse. And twice as white. I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. You'd better be at the tavern. With a hot grog. Or two. Good day, sir. You'll be Haskell's banishers, I take it. Antea Duarte. This is Red McRaith. Hugh Bachelor. 
The governor had me prepare the schoolhouse for your comfort. It has fallen out of use. Will that be all? We're expected at the tavern. Where might we find it? The King's Arm. You can't miss it for the lamps are lit. The school is now a bunkhouse, and the meeting house cold and dark. But the tavern shines yet. Well then, let us be thankful for small mercies. Where are the children? Several died of fever. We could see disaster coming. We thought we'd have to bury them all. We sent the children to safety. We sent them away. That can't have been easy. It can't be easy now. No. No, it is not. Farewell, Mr. Bachelor. And you may wish us luck. Good luck, then, to the both of you. Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Pour us a drink. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is cold, your serving woman may sit while we talk. I'm the help. She's the boss. You're not Charles. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McRaith. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume. Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is thick skinned Newsmith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her. And rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly. But we are worth saving. And now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how he found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. What do you think happened? I could guess to little use. It is evident, however, that Charles's unexpected death is linked to his investigation of the curse. In the minister's absence, I try 
in all humility to protect us all, body and soul, from our ongoing peril. You see, in my youth, I too was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists, and neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home, and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now. And I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease. Then came the nightmares. Then came madness. In the end came death. And death remains. But in all honesty, <laughs> I think the weather is the worst part. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. What did Charles know about it? What had he learned? Tragically, I had not yet had the opportunity to discuss this investigation. And his passing now excludes the possibility. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that, I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands. For Charles. All right. For Charles. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. I've barely slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions. But I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther? Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. 
Thank you, Esther. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. What will you do for my Charles? If he's present, we'll find him. Then we'll ask him what he wants us to do. Must I see him too? First, let's find out what happened. After that, we'll see. Best get started. Time may be against us. You'll be all right. I doubt it, but I'll do my work all the same. We came here to help Charles and help Charles with Charles. Ask around, see what people will tell you. I'll go to the cemetery and do the same. Be careful. Aye, you too. Now is a good time for we old friends to talk. We've come too far, Red and I, not to see you one last time. Your pupil has become the master. If we fight, I'll beat you. Come on, Charles. Join me now. I know you're here. I know you're here. You know me, Ghost. I only wish to talk. Esther worries. And I am here at last. Oh, poor Esther. I'm so sorry, my friend. So sorry for us all. What happened? What's going on here? Sad to say, dear friend. I made a mistake. And it cost me my life. Is Red with you? There is no time to waste. Before you died, you investigated the curse. What did you learn? That our enemy is deceptive and merciless. That we should not underestimate its power. We? I am dead, dearest Dante. But I am a banisher yet. I may still teach you. If I allow you, which I do not. Antea, do not repeat my mistakes. If a nightmare curses New Eden, you need all the help you can get. Its presence felt strongest in the meeting house. Perhaps the light of God there forced it to fight its ground. I had the building closed. The worst of the malevolence is contained. But it won't stay locked up for long. How did this nightmare kill you? I believed that I could come to the cemetery and make it manifest. To my initial delight, it worked. I now suspect it came by choice. It seemed amused, as if it were a pleasant game to weigh my measure as a man. What did it look like? I... I don't know. When it manifested, it appeared as... Esther. My dear Esther, I did not see its true face, but I heard a woman. Not Esther, someone else. She was laughing. I felt her gaze. My heart froze. 
I died. The spirit is vengeance pure. The ghost of one who was terribly wronged. I've heard your warning. You can go. No, I must remain. Esther needs my protection. My flock needs me too. You know how this works. You know I won't allow that. I am still myself, Antea. With time, I'll grow stronger. I can help you. The longer you haunt Esther, the hungrier you'll be. You know this. This is different. I'm the Reverend Charles Davenport, your friend and mentor. You know me. You know I am a good man. I knew you. You were a good man. Now you are a ghost, and I cannot let that stand. But I swear it, the nightmare will end, and Red and I shall do the ending. Charles Davenport was a good man, and a fine mentor. And you a fine student, though you took a hard line. I never could unpick that from your character. Has life tempered you since? Life has tempered my steel. Death and the manner of it has made you the very thing you once opposed. Goodbye, Charles. Peace on your soul. Remembrance on your... Antea, wait! Wait for what? We're banishers. Death to the dead. Let Esther choose for herself. Oh Lord, please don't ask me to do that. Esther, my good wife, and the very best. I miss you so. Oh dear Lord, Charles, why are you here? Why have you come back? You must leave, please. I must stay. I must protect you. The thing in the meeting house feeds on our torment. I should have known better. I know better now. Antia, give Charlie the ascent he deserves. Charles Davenport, you have no reason to stay. Go, let Esther grieve in peace. Save her, my friends, and save yourselves. Save them all. I'll walk Esther home. I'll do it. The women can talk. Uh, then, all the way to the schoolhouse and make the bed. Charles is at rest now. And Taya, she gave him the care he needed. We did the right thing. Charles was our friend. I love you, Red McCraith. But? But when it comes to ghosts, your heart makes you reckless. It's dangerous. Were you really about to banish Charles? Charles would have done the same for your ghost or mine. I hope he'd have at least hesitated. Charles was a good man, full of love. Banishing his ghost wouldn't have been easy, but it would have been right. Ghosts only bring misery, Red. 
make no mistake, they steal life's essence from the living. Aye. They don't always do it out of malice. Give them that. We are banishers. We end suffering for those who live. We bring closure to those who don't. A ghost may suffer too. A sin puts a gentler end to it. But not a safer one. Better to banish and be sure. Would you banish me? If it came to? You'll not escape me so easy. You I would bring back from the dead. <laughs> That's not funny. I'd fill you with fresh essence. I'd give you so much essence you'd return bloated with life. Steal essence from the living to feed my ghost. <laughs> You're with me. You're a scruffy-headed lout, Red McGrath, and I will never let you go. Over my dead body, mister. I thought I was meant to be the soft-hearted one. <laughs> you are. I think Charles was right. This thing in the meeting house could be a... What did he call it? A nightmare? I really hope not. Such entities are legendary ghosts, even for banishers. We'll see tomorrow. Now, to sleep. This was a dreadful day. Poor Charles. Poor Esther. Aye, poor Esther. Firebean. She says I'm the reckless one. Three blind mice. See how they run. See how they. <gasps> and there. Blind. All blind. Oh, Red, can't you see? We never stood a chance. Antea, are you hurt? Where are you? I'm here, my love. What happened? I'm here, my love. How mundane. Show yourself. God came to the man in a dream and said, Behold, thou art dead. But the man had done nothing wrong and said, Lord, wilt thou also slay the righteous? What? Will you slay the righteous? Be not alarmed. I bring you aid. There is no aid. There is only dereliction. Where is Antea? What have you done with her? That was Paul's. Lady, if you hurt her... You cling to love, a fool to the last. There is no love. There is only defilement. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. 
If you laid a finger on her... You what? Come to her aid? Oh, there is no aid. There is oh, only... Oh, oh, retribution. Give him back. Oh. How touching. You've come to claim your man. You think you love him. You do not. There, in the dark oh. of your marrow, there is no love. Only betrayal. I offer you a trade. He stays and you leave with your life. I'll bargain with no ghost. You have a brain, yet you think with your idiot heart. You're weak. Come to her aid now, when all is lost. If you do, I'll be waiting. The icy ocean made a diamond from his grief, then buried it in his heart. The weight of his failure dragged him down. Outside time, drowning in the gloom, he spoke her name. Take me instead, he screamed, soundless, to the cold and silent waters. Out beyond the black veil of death, something heard his cries and reached for him. Let her go. Take me instead. Let her go! Ah, you're awake. Who are you? She who rescued you. Tended you for days on end. Weeks, maybe. Weeks? Oh, God. What have I done? Get your strength back before you beat yourself up. She's dead. Yes. That's why you're here. And why I was sent to look after you. Who are you? I feel like we've met, but I'm sure we have not. I feel like I know you forever, but do I? You're confused. It's normal. You've been near killed by a nightmare, you've lost your beloved, and now you've a witch by your sickbed. Witch? Witch. I go by Seeker. 
Find the banisher, said my mistress. Tend him and then answer any questions he asks you before you leave him be. So, how do you feel? Does it matter? Of course it matters. It means you're alive and you haven't given up. What am I to do now? How do I... How do I do it alone? You're not alone. Have faith. If Ceridian had told me more, I'd tell you it. But you must have faith. This isn't what I want. Not like this. Not without her. No one gets what they want. You get what comes. And if you survive, you get changed by it. You have a hole in you. A yawning, grimacing pit in your soul. That's love, that is. The hole won't fill because the love won't die. God, what have I done? Here's the thing. Unlike most, you get a second chance. I suggest you seize it. Why do you hate me? I serve my mistress. She bids me help you, so I help you. Ceridian says the wall between the living and the dead is under threat. You, it seems, have a part to play. This is mine. You've lost me. No, I found you. But so did your grief. And it demands to be felt. You may think you're done with your ghosts, Red McCraith. But they aren't done with you. I'll go now. Rest. Why ever my mistress saved you, she has good reasons. The best. Where are you going? Home. To Ceridian. She needs me. Where shall I find you if... or when I need to? Maya marshes. Great big swamps other side of the woods. You can't miss them. We'll know when you're coming. Until we... Me again, then. That's right, Banisher. Now, turn around. What? I'm leaving. What is happening? What? And here? Right here. My love. Right here. Please, you. I have you. You have me. Um. <sighs> you seem weak. You need... Rest.
I feel hollow. Do not be troubled. How could I not be? To have lost you and found you like this. And you're hungry. That's one way to say it. Yes. What can I do? Charles's Bible. The tie that bound his ghost. Some essence remains upon it. For now, it will do me. I needed this. I feel better. Look at you. At us. I know. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're back. Truly. The living should not truck with the dead. I've known that since childhood. I learned the hard way. You never told me this. What happened? It was a lifetime ago. For now, it doesn't matter. How are you feeling? Awful. And with a few more words? Angry, frustrated, useless. We should talk about what happened. After the meeting house, I mean. What do you remember from after you died? I remember the suddenness of my death. I remember nothing but... After that, a nothingness. Timeless. Lost. And then I heard you. You spoke my name. I searched for a way back. I woke up in a cave. Been rescued by a young woman named Seeker. A witch's apprentice. She was proud to tell me that. Her mistress had sent her to take care of me. Witches rarely show themselves. Intriguing that one would help us. You should run away from all this. I sense the nightmare's presence near my body. I won't be free till we've reclaimed it. I refuse to be this way. I'll not abide it. I'm so sorry, my love. How can I help? I'm a ghost. You're a banisher. I'll not banish you. I cannot and tear. So you die. You can't ask that of me. If that's what I wanted, you'd have no choice. But you don't wish it, do you? Not before I've had my revenge. Not before I've seen the nightmare defeated by you and me both. In the schoolhouse, he joked about bringing me back to life. Is that possible? Yes. The ritual of lesser palingenesis. It's extremely difficult. Highly dangerous. I could try, right? You'd teach me and I'd bring you back. Red, it's an ancient ritual. It requires power. It consumes essence in large quantities. We're talking about human sacrifice. Murder. Just maybe... We could consider it. I mean, 
If there's the slightest chance I could bring you back, I'd take it. It's a dark ritual, Red. It's tempting, and that's dangerous. To think of being back in your arms. I'm tempted too. Could I give you your assent? That would be the simplest solution, but not the easiest. Why? My body is my tie, and the nightmare still holds it. In the meeting house, but before she let me fall, I swear she dared me to come back. She's as devious as she is powerful. She won't just hand it over. Then what shall we do? If we are to return to New Eden Town, we must first learn more about our enemy. Charles said nightmares don't appear without good reason. Yes. We have a mystery to solve. Witches to meet. People to find and questions to ask. And then you'll help me go. One way or another. I will. I swear it, Mother. Rest. You need it. I'll stay close. Ben, you're back. Beg pardon. I thought you were someone else. You hungry, friend? The stew is thin enough, but I'd be glad to share. Kind of you to offer, lad. But no, thank you. Been a while since I've seen another human's face. You come from camp? You a uh, hunter? Of sorts. Red McCreath. I'm a banisher. Like in the stories. Jacob Lind. I'm a trapper. <laughs> That's a real job. Who's Ben? Another trapper? Hi, the best of them. Taught me all I know. He's out now, but he'll be back. Where has he gone? The bridge is down. As down as down can be. Can't cross. Bad things lurk in the shadows. They sent flesh. Game's low. Game's low and Ben's gone. He'll find game, he will. I know it. What lurks in the shadows? Is that what keeps you here? That... And the fog. Can't hunt if you can't see. Ben shoots better than me. Knows the woods better too. I'd only slow him. Only slow him. Where did you meet Ben? We found each other. Brothers in spirit, he said. He's been good to me. Too good. Why? He's important to you. I and me to him. He's lost his nerve, or a ghost has taken it from him. Get some rest, Jacob. You need it. If you see Ben, tell him I'm thinking of him. Tall lad, even when he's lying down. Can't miss him. Time to force the ghost to manifest itself. You're not Jacob. Who's you? My name is Red McCraith. A Scot. You? Antea Duarte. We're banishers. We can help you. I'm 
beyond help. Where's Jacob? We know what befell you, Benedict. What keeps you here? He does. He waits and waits and waits on me. He'll not face what he has done, and I cannot go. I cannot go. But I'll not hate him. How could I? We thought him lost. In mind and reason. Who'd not lose their mind? Stuck in place for weeks on end. Deprived of a living. Deprived of a life. Though I denied it, I saw it coming. I became... wary. Some part of me knew what he was thinking. Because I was thinking it too. What do you want from Jacob? Do you seek revenge? I seek no vengeance. He is I, and I am him. What does he need that he may let go? He needs to face the truth. To accept what he has done to both of us. At night, he'd read scripture. God would mind us if we were good and honest. Jacob taught me that. We were good. We lived honest lives. We kept to ourselves, minded our business, and no one else's. So tell me, Banisher, what did we do to deserve this? I'm sorry. Despair can drive a good man to a bad place. God only visits hardship upon us because he knows we can bear it. Thank you, Benedict. Perhaps we'll talk again. Perhaps we shall, Banisher. Perhaps we shall. Oh, there's you, Jacob. Mr. McCraith, sir? I'm sorry, Jacob, we must talk. Something has happened to Benedict. What? Where is he? What happened? Come on now, Jacob. If something's happened to Ben, say so. Where is he? Benedict is in pain. For his sake, you need to remember what happened. You need to remember what you did. But I... No. I would never... I couldn't hurt him. I love him. Jacob, look at me. It's safe to remember. Now tell me, what happened on that cliff top? I was tired. So tired. Hunger was digging holes in me, burning in my throat. I could think of nothing else. We don't give up. We don't give in. But I wanted to. I wanted it all to stop. So you made it stop. Do you remember now? I failed him. I failed Benedict. I was so angry. So angry. He kept pushing me. We kept. We argued. And I couldn't think. When I saw him lying there, on the ground, lifeless, the whisper said, It was him or me. Him or me. I would have died. I should have died. For my sins, I deserve no better. I failed God. I failed my friend. I'm a monster. I deserve no mercy. No. You're just a sinner, begging for help. We both faced a choice, simple and awful, to kill or to die. 
You struck first, and here we are. Do you forgive me? Our fates are in the hands of others now. Yes. Banisher, do your job. If you're to come back, if we're to use the ritual we spoke of, this is when it starts. Red, if we take one step along that path... Jacob is ready to die. The others won't be. We'll tell lies. We'll harvest the essence of the living. I'll shoulder the blame. As the man says, we face a choice, simple and awful. Do we kill? To be together again? Or do we part forever? We must decide now. Jacob Lind. You believe you merit no mercy, but your suffering must have an ending. You murdered your friend, the man you called your brother. You fed on him. Then you denied your part in his ending and bound his spirit to this realm. You can never right this wrong. But the truth and your death will ease his suffering. There can be no half-measures here. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Benedict, my friend, forgive me. I took the life of a man I loved and ate his flesh. This I deserve. That man killed and ate his friend. When I was a soldier, I heard many stories of those besieged eating their own. Some were true. Famine is a ferocious master. Jacob was hungry. Yeah, just like you. Just like me. I never thought I'd blame anyone. I've not killed since I quit the army. I swore I'd never kill again. It's not too late to change our minds. We made the right choice. And we made it together. No turning back. Then, so I may have my resurrection, we'll steal human essence. We'll kill people for our own ends. Living breathing people. We'll be banishers no longer. Right. That's that settled. Thank you. I hope you've no regrets. Soon I'll reclaim my life. We will pay the highest of prices. We banishers may call it blaming. But our hearts will know we're taking lives. How many? I don't know. Perhaps too many to ask of you. I want us back, Red. I want revenge on what killed me. I want to live. I want it too. With the whole of my heart. No price too high. I will do it. By my oath, I swear it, my love. I'll see you back from the dead.
Come with me. Up. What happened? Rope trap. Jacob Lind mentioned a hunter's camp. It may be close. <sighs> Something's there. Something alive. Yes. Who are you and where did you spring from? I've come from New Eden Town. That's a very long way from here, sir. Who are you? My name is Red McCraith. I work for the selectmen of New Eden Town. I'm a banisher. Didn't you and the other one die in the meeting house? I fell in the water. And the tide took me. I survived. Up to now, anyway. I've never seen a banisher before. I expected more. Could I please continue this conversation with my feet on the ground? Be easy now. Stop your jiggling. Hold still, I said. You try holding still when some lassie's shooting at you. In that case, banish her. You may escape the trap yourself. Wait. What? No, no, come on! Our camp lies downhill. I'll wait for you there. Come back here. Shit! I don't suppose you can help me, can you? That was entertaining. Good to see you smile. Wait. Something's there. Something alive. No. So, you found us safely, Red McWraith. Aye, well, thanks to you. I had to know you could look out for yourself. You're welcome to stay until you're told to leave. I'm Kate Newsmith. Far as you're concerned, I'm in charge round here. Uh, Newsmith? Anything to thick skin? Aye, we're sisters. Me and Antea, we met her in town when we first landed. Thickskin will return from the hunt soon enough. 
Sorry for your loss, by the by. Why might you tell me to leave? He who don't pitch in, pitches out. We'll not go hungry to feed him that don't contribute. Better than killing you for food, I suppose. How fares New Eden Town? I'm heading back that way. You're mad. There's no going back. There's not to go back to. We may be all that's left. New Eden Town now is naught but sorrow, pestilence and death. Some of our band were homesick. We heard them screaming in the woods. They didn't come back. Something wicked prowls. Folk dream of a murderous beast. It'll kill them if they dare to leave camp. There was a second group. They never arrived. Some think the beast got them. Like I say, we may be all that's left. Guilt. Dread. She puts a brave face on it, but the truth is in her eyes. All right, I'll stay a while. I have certain skills, if they may be of use. Our hearts are low. Nightmares plague our sleep. Do what needs doing, help who needs helping. Well, give me some names. Prudence Hick. A widow, like so many. She cooks. Lately she's cooked shite. He who puts the food aright is a hero indeed. I'll make the rounds. I'll pay my respects to Widow Hake and see what's the bar. If you can't find Prudence, ask Jane. They're close. Also, please check on our blacksmith. His already meagre skills have lately declined. Talk to Jane, talk to Prudence, check the forge. Talk to anyone who needs help, which is probably everyone. Right, got it? One empty cabin remains. A tree fell on it, but you may have what's left. Welcome to the dark woods. I'll take my leave of you for now. Rest. You'll need it for my sister's return. I'll send for you. So? I've done my rounds, as you asked. And? The blacksmith and his wife were haunted by an angry ghost. It won't be coming back. I suppose I shall believe you. Anything else to report? Other hauntings are likely. I've no particulars as yet. All right. So, I'll thank you kindly, Mr. McWraith. You've done your part and earned your place. My sister should soon return. She'll surely want to meet you. Until then, you may stay. I'll take my leave. I do. Kate came by. Thick skin is back and wants to see you. Why did she not wake me? Perhaps she resented playing the messenger. Perhaps she just wanted to make you late. She was vexed. Thick skin return has upset her. Kate reminds me of my sister. Aoife. Oh, Clan MacRaith's little spit fire. Always at my heels. Or giving father's guards all kinds of hell. <laughs> she was a wee thing. But strong. And with big men in armour didn't they scare her. She had more brains than I, and more wild too. <laughs> In sparring, she'd beat me handy.
She would have made a fine swordswoman, had she grown. Someday I'd like to meet my brother and sister. I'm sorry. You're what? Twins. By my mother's letters, they must be eight years old. You never told me this. You never asked. I had no idea you got letters from home. My mother writes once a year. The letters take months to find me, if they find me at all. Until now, I've given it little thought. What are their names? Ugh. What? I'm interested, that's all. You're bothersome. Ayomi Day is my sister. Temi is my brother. Three Duarte children walk the world. God help us. Good boy. Now that you can count to three, we can move on to four. I hope the twins have more charm than you do. Lull, the halfpenny redeemer come to save us. Thou may enter, O oh great saviour. Excuse my sister. Underestimating her would be a mistake. She's tougher than you. You're alive. A walk by the beach? Before that? I don't remember. You were lucky. But luck has value. You didn't ask me here to watch you drink soup. What do you want? Kate says you have metal. I can use that. There's a service I need from you. You've something important needs doing and you want me to do it. No wonder your sister's fuming. Kate may wish her skin were thick as mine, but wishing will not make it true. Kate seems pretty tough to me. Her feelings fail her. She's much to learn. Speak frankly. What would you have me do? Banish a ghost that doesn't exist. Folk here believe in monsters. The fear makes them weak. Kill the beast. Kill their fear and give them back their strength. Fear can be good. We can't spare much, but you shall have a gun and powder and shot with it. You know the curse is real. Why not the beast too? The beast is nothing much. A bear, perhaps a wolf, a monster only in the mind. Why not kill it yourself? Because when the Banisher kills the beast, everyone here will believe the monster dead. Tis honest work. I presume you'll pay for it. I have the means to pay you. My word on it. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'll hunt your beasts, whatever it is, if you answer one last wee question. You may ask it. What's with the name? No one rightly calls their daughter Thick Skin. My birth name be best forgotten. Thick Skin better suits the world. Fair enough. In the wild, we carry muskets. And we carry these. Whistle for help if the need be great. And the gun? My sister can spare her musket. 
if you can get it from her. Don't you have business elsewhere? Go, save us all from the beast. Go do my sister's char work. I need a musket. Thickskin said I should have yours. You'll rot in hell first, and so will she. This should be good. Killing the beast helps everyone. Your sister only means to protect you. She traps me. I cannot leave camp unarmed, and she knows it. She wants me to give up my freedom and hand it to you. Not a chance. There's pain behind the anger. I doubt you'll blunt her temper. Measure your worth by your own mark. Your sister's estimation shouldn't it matter. It matters. I do great work here, but my bull-headed sister won't see it. <sighs> Thick skin measures worth by metal. The strong will live and the weak will die. She chose you to hunt the beast with my musket. She doesn't have to say a word about what she thinks of me. I'll bring you back your gun. I swear on it. You won't make it to New Eden Town without a gun. And we both know it. I'm sorry. I wish there were another way. As do I, Scotsman. You may have the gun. Now be so kind as to leave me be. The flint's a little tired, but she strikes fine. Unlike some, she won't go off half-cocked. I'll take good care of her. And she of me, no doubt. Climbed down from your tree then, have you? Aye, with no help from you. What's your name, lad? Beloved Scudder, if you must know it. I see you found yourself a gun. Kate gave it to me. I'll check, you know. May I pass? If Kate gave you her gun, I suppose you may pass. But I don't counsel it. Bad things happen in the woods. Only thick skin walks safely out there. You and Kate walk the woods yourselves, do you not? Sometimes, and it's no gift. Kate's quick-tempered when she's not closed off. They say her heart were broke once. It never mended. Thank you for your time, Scudder. Good day to you. See you again, McRaith. If you're lucky. I sense the vivid echo of a ghost. The longer path is safer, you must take it. Why won't you come with us, then? The quickest she'll go ahead. We'll wait with food and shelter ready, then we'll all travel on together. Nicholas here shall walk with you. There'd be no better shot among us. Do you agree, Doolan? I'll do my best for you, Samuel. Of course I will. But if Thick Skin says we'll be safe, I believe it. In the wild we carry these. Whistle for help if the need be great. Someone is generous with her whistles. Much use they were to this poor bugger. If this Doolin fellow was meant to protect the missing group, I dread to think what became of them. Iris! Your father is hurt and can walk no further. We must rest and treat the wounded. We must find shelter. The cold night will kill us all. Fire will bring the wolves. And so does that accursed whistle. The wolves are already here. Where is Nicholas with the help from Thickskin's camp? Where's our deliverance? We'll sound the call once more. Thickskin will come. She swore on it. The whistles only bring the wolves upon us.
Help will come. Help will come, I know it. The Lord have mercy upon our souls. The Huntress has killed us. Right in hell, thick skin new smith! Come out, or if you are, come on, show yourself. Red. It's behind me, isn't it? Yes. Of course it is. Every bloody time. Surely too big to be a wolf. It's a scourge, all right. Anger shaped to kill. We wish you no harm. We know all about the wolf whistles. The whistle stick skin gave you. Oh, shit! Betrayer. Not a thick skin. Kate. It spoke her name with just one voice. Her voice. The voice of the nightmare. You're certain? To the core of me. Within this creature lurks some part of my killer. <laughs> Skin and Kate both accused. Is anyone in these damn woods innocent? Then it were real. This beast. How did I miss you on my travels through the woods? Because it did not want you. It wants your sister. Stay, Scotchman. I can use you. You gave them dog whistles. 
You sent them to die. Those with metal would have reached camp, and I'd have used them too. Those who died won't need feeding. The weak die that the strong may live. You tricked them. I tested them. This be the way of it. This be the way of the world. We have a hidden watcher. The sister. Kate? Show yourself. What? You're unarmed! Get yourself back to camp! All these long years... All these long years, I wish to be like you. To be as tough as you. If I was stalwart like my sister, I thought, I'd have saved her. I'd have saved the woman I love. I wish to be like you. And I see it now. I was just like you. Cold, selfish, a fear of my own heart. And the woman I loved died for it. So many dead. You killed them as I killed Deborah. Look at us. We have no metal at all. Everything I did, I did so that you could live. You're my sister. I love you. Would you love me if I was weak? Or would you leave me too to the wolves? How dare you even think it? Oh. I dare because I care. Enough! I've done your hot work. I banished the monster you swore didn't exist, and now I know the truth. I know what you did. I made the hard choice. Do you think it pleased me? Do you think it were easy? What little chance they had, you robbed them of. You sent them out to die. They blew the whistles. They'd have been a burden. What happened here were harsh, but it were right. Better some dead by fang than all dead by famine. That makes a grim kind of sense. The beast spoke with many voices. One we, I, had heard before. The voice from the chapel. And Taya's killer. It charged you, Kate, with betrayal. What? I don't... This thing can have naught to do with me. I betrayed no one. I knew not of my sister's plan. Else I'd have stopped it. She's telling the truth, but so was the beast. It named her for a reason. Your journal did not fully burn. You read it. How dare you! You loved a woman. She died. You still carry the guilt. Is this why you tried to leave New Eden? What? No, it was... She died long ago, and I'll talk of her no more. She fears a reckoning. Let's give her one. Life brims with hard choices. Perhaps you did the best you could. But it falls to me to clear up your mess. The older sister's heart is withered. She'll never feel remorse. Let her pay. She's hard as stone, too far gone. Mumble all you want, I regret nothing. The curse struck, and I alone saw the danger. I acted. And now it is I who must act. You ruthlessly sacrifice the innocent. 
to ensure your own survival. I can't let you away with it. To heal, Kate must be free of her sister's grip. You mean to kill me? Then you're just like me, only more foolish. You mean to kill her? I mean to save her. A malignant spirit lives in thick-skin Newsmith. And I will banish it. I've no evil spirit. I've done nothing wrong. Demon. Sprite. Evil spirit. I banish you. Great tormentor. I banish you. Life to the living. Death to the dead. I became the pitiless thorn, but I did not make the world. It made me. Red. The curse has left it. Here, at least. Look at that. It's beautiful. No. Look at it. You're thinking. So are you. Penny for your thoughts. I was thinking of Kate. Of her horror when she saw the ghost. Of her pain when she lost her sister. She was desolate. And yet relieved and terrified. I can't shake the picture. According to her journal, Kate had had the courage to love a woman, but betrayed her. She must have meant this Deborah. Whoever this ghost is, her resentments extend beyond the newsmiths. May her wounds heal well. Sisterhood can be complicated. When all this is over, you can go home and get to know the Duarte twins. Get to know your sister. I knew her sister. 
Like Kate, I lost her. What happened? When I was very young, I had a friend. She was my chosen sister and very dear to me. I opened my heart. It was a mistake. I played with fire and was burned. I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. I have a new family now. I have found the love of my life. I love you. Always. Rest now. I have the watch. I'll sit by your bedside until I can hold you once again. Ah. Uh, the banisher who died for her novice. Ah, the witch's novice. Ho oh, there, Antea. Are you not surprised to see me? You're a little early, but no. Not surprised. On my return, Ceridian told me our poor wee banisher would turn up haunted. A haunted banisher. Well, it is funny, isn't it? You look like you need a moment. Can we help? <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. Some of my spirit chasers went out. Ugh, that's how old Saul crossed the hem. The hem? The hem. Where the fabric of the living world meets that of the dead. Ah. Uh, the veil between the visible and the invisible. Whatever soothes your soul, Vanisher. Rest. Heal. Tell us how to fix the spirit chasers. The spell is cast. You need only light them. Be careful. Old Mossed won't have gone far. Oh, I'll sit down now. Good luck. Have fun. All ready to go then? Good. She's waiting for you. Go where? To see your mistress? Ceridian, yes. In a boat. It'll be fun. No. We're going to New Eden. The nightmare's grip on the world is too strong. The fog is too thick. You cannot enter its stronghold. There's no way back to the meeting house. Not yet. And not without help. We've done fine on our own so far. You're dead. Maybe you're not doing quite as well as you think. <laughs> you're blunt, but I take your point. We'll talk to Ceridian before we move on. That's better. Follow me. Careful. Don't rock the bow. Have we far to go? How far is far? Don't worry. You'll be safe. Safe? The mire is home to many angry spirits. <laughs> but my mistress keeps them quiet. <coughs> Dead quiet. That spectre you fought looked like a harvester. Banishers and their labels. He'll surely be back. So will I. The veil seems thinner here. Always has been. We call them the Maya Marshes, but the nearby tribes call it the Ill Mouth. Stay too long, we'd get sick. Is that why Ceridian's wards wane faster than they should? That is because she's dying. I'm sorry. Life's a journey. Death is but one step. This is almost as lovely as that ride through here in Gracht. All we're missing is the hailstones and the Russia at our heels. I'm sure we can arrange something. You do plan the best escapes. What a mess. What happened here? Men happened. War happened.
A soul soul. What does he want? Destruction, bloodshed, Ceridian's head on a plate. They must have known each other once. We could help you banish him. He banishes us so arrogant. He's Ceridian's business. Guess we don't interfere. The spectres on the shore aren't moving. The marshes are well protected. Are those soldiers? That, Miss Duarte, is all Saul's army. You're young. You're dead. I meant your essence is strong for one your age. How did you come to be here? How did you come to waste your potential by being a banisher? Do you believe I'd make a better witch? Yes, I do. You'd be doing yourself and me a favor. Welcome to Ceridian's Island. There is much power here. Oh, you noticed that, did you? Like I say, welcome to Ceridian's Island. She's at home, and expecting you. Follow the path until you find a black pond near ancient ruins. I'll see you there soon enough. How does she do that? It's a trick, right? There's more to that one than tricks. The girl is gifted. No, that's not quite true. I knew who I was, it's just... I was lost, and I had nowhere to go. I had no when to go. Does that make sense? Time lays traps for the dead. It's never fair. His voice was a beacon. The light in the darkness that led me back to me. And to the world. You have a powerful connection, you two. Or will have. Or had. Possibly all three. And here he is, the other banisher. Greetings. Good day. Come, sit. It's been too long. Have we met? Of course we have. Just now. Also later. Decades ago. Never mind. It's good to see you, Red McRae. I told her our story. I hope you don't mind. Such an ordeal. I'm so very sorry you have to go through it. How hard it must be for you both. I... thank you. But now you're here together, and I'm glad. Because you'll only be able to end this together. You brought us here. Why? You have many questions, and I have little time. I have a few breaths left yet. But yes, this is the twilight. Still, after the darkness comes the dawn. You're dying. Soon I'll be one with the trees, root and bark. But that is not why I asked you here. Dearest dears, the path ahead is yet unclear. But know this. If you are to defeat the Nightmare, 
your hearts must be open. Open, of course, to each other. No barriers. Your bond must be strong. How can we defeat it? How can we even begin to match its power? You surrender. Unconditionally. To each other. When you died, dear Antea, New Eden crumbled. But some yet live. Seek them out. Help them. The Nightmare won't like that. No. You are, after all, a threat to her existence. And rightly so. She believes you cannot reach into her domain. She is wrong. There is a way. The Void. A dreadful place beneath both the Incarnate and the Invisible. When you have learned to walk the Void, you may use it to enter the Nightmare's Den. First, you must free the people of New Eden from her grip. To reach New Eden and retrieve my body, we must help the very people who created the Nightmare in the first place? Yes. Excuse my lack of enthusiasm. Can we not just go back to the meeting house and do our jobs? You must release folk here from her grasp. Only then, through the void, may you reach New Eden Town and confront her. How do we access the void? Is there a ritual? In places, the void is breached. Follow the beacons, do not stray, and all will be well. Our seeker crafted you a tuning key. With it, you may open the breach. Don't linger. Time is fickle. We recently came across a cursed item and thought you could help us cleanse it. Really? Why us? Well, you know, spells, curses, witches. I was teasing. How fun it is to see you squirm. There are many ways to enchant an item or dispel its curse. Seeker may be of help. Go talk to her. She likes to tease you too. Thank you, Ceridian. We'll be off. Before you leave, tell me, what did you choose? What do you mean? Each of you made a promise to the other. What was it? What did you choose? I chose to stay. Lives for a life? An expensive bargain. I made a promise. I'll pay the price. I do not judge the deal. I worry about the cost. Ceridian gave us a tuning key. Now I know how you pull your little disappearing trick. It's no trick. It's what we do to survive. Too many bastards out there want us dead. This must be one of the breaches Ceridian mentioned. Yes. This is a void breach. But yours are a little further down, in the cave. You'll see. This one is special. It's the last and only way into New Eden Town since the bridge burned down. We could go back to New Eden right now? Why would you want to do that? The Nightmare is strong. She has New Eden by the proverbials. Loosen her grasp, and maybe, just maybe, you can walk through that breach and live. All right, all right. We get it. You have your tuning key. Hold on to it for dear life. That shouldn't be a problem. Once through the breach, there's no turning back. Keep going and don't look back. We found a cursed object. An object? What object? A chest, locked and evidently cursed. A curse could mean different things, depending. 
What do you think happened? We found it in the wilderness. We think maybe someone bound a spirit to it for protection. Ah, I do believe you found a chest belonging to Fear God. How do we get it open? Why would you want to open it? That's demonology, and I'm not one for stepping in no demonology. Even if old Fear God wasn't the worst. But from what he told me, Fear God Waterbury, the man, not his ghost, kept a ritual of unbinding in his breviary. Do you have this breviary? No, but I know he can find it. He spent his last years in seclusion, deep in the dark woods. Go northeast from the hunter's camp. Keep to the east side of the trail until you can turn south. You should come to a clearing. He had a hut there. You forget things sometimes, so here. I'll write it down for you. We'll be going. Hope to talk again soon. Yes. I do so enjoy our little chats across the hem. Are you all right? I'll do. But that nightmare over there, we know so little about it. That worries me. What about you? Whatever the reason, that nightmare is here because of something these men and women did. New Eden reeks of their guilt. I died because of them. Curse these people. Curse them and their secrets and their sins. We all get there. We always do. Are those breaches really safe? We were protected. You heard the whispers. The despair and that one voice. It called to you. Something knew you were there. It saw you. I thought... For, for a moment, I thought of them. Those poor butchered boys. I swear in the void I heard... They're screaming. Wings. Sent to die for their sultan's pride. It was like I was back in the Balkans. Those ghosts are gone. You asked for their ascent and I gave it to them. They're not in the void. I know. This void. Is it hell? Like in the scriptures? The scriptures? Whose scriptures? It's just a... What if all the teachings of my youth were wrong? What if what we just saw is what awaits me for my sins? I became a banisher to help the living by ending the suffering of lingering ghosts. But we don't end their pain. We condemn them to an eternity of suffering. We curse them. Rory, you are the kindest, most compassionate banisher I have ever met. Don't let an old god scare you into thinking otherwise. This void is the work of no god. What if they come back? What if the souls I blamed come for me? They'd have every right. The spirits of the living are consumed in the ritual. They're not coming back. All is well. As long as we stay together, all is well. Aye. All is well. Hold there! None in, none out. Not living nor dead. Name's Red McCraith. I'm obviously a banisher. Open the door there. I've business within. Your business is, if you'll excuse my articulating the evidence, not my business. I have my orders. You can't come in. I hear you, friend. What's your name? Name's Andrew White. You seem a pleasant fellow. I like a Scot me, but standing here, I'm on duty. And when I'm on duty, I'm not your friend. 
Uh, listen, mate. Folk in here have problems enough, and I can't be disobeying orders. Either Priest or Pennington would have my guts, and I fancy neither. Pennington knows me. He'll know I can help. I'm sure he does. But put one dead man down, and three come back next day. Round here, sweet victory fast turns bitter. Bottom line is, the captain is indisposed, and I'll not add your complications to the pile. Now, you want to lend a hand? Mrs. Priest and her party are overdue. You can't miss the outpost. It looks out across the valley. If you could find her, and make sure she doesn't die, you'd surely gain her favor. And favor, as they say, opens doors. Get in a fight and find your boss and dig her out of whatever hole she's in. All right. I can do that. They have spectre troubles. Let's first clear the nearby nest to relieve the fort, then deal with the missing. Right. I'll likely be back. Find our friends, Banisher. Or put them to rest. I'll try. As soon as I take care of the Spectre's nest, I'll go looking for the outpost. My bolt is shot! Behind you! A timely arrival. You'll be Haskell's banishers. Thank you. Thank you both. You can see me. Clear as day, just as I can see. This is my husband. I am Helen Priest. And Thea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGraith. It is rare that the living can see the lingering dead. All I know is one day I woke after seven long years of grief, and my Sebastian was back. It was as if my prayers had at last been answered. That was enough for me. In times of danger, I am duty-bound to protect the woman I love. You understand? Seven years. Why come back now? It did not feel like seven years. Suddenly, I felt her pain calling to me. Divine intervention or otherwise, all that matters is that my dear Sebastian is back. Now, when I need him most. Andrew White sent us. He thought you might be in trouble. Plainly, you needed your guardian angel. We needed more than one. Thanks to you, we'll resupply the camp. Matthews and Williams did not die in vain. This was a risky expedition, but Helen had no choice. If the survivors were to rely on Pennington alone, the fort would have already fallen. I suspect that's so. Sometimes difficult choices must be made. That's courage. All the courage in the world will be worthless if those in command won't match it. Pennington did this while monsters relentless besieged the fort. But make no mistake, these men's deaths are on the captain's conscience. If he has one. How so? Seven years ago, a plague came to New Eden. Pennington quarantined the sick in the mines, walled them up. They were dark times. Hard times. None knew what the morrow would bring. We all lost much. Too much. The second in command, Sebastian volunteered to stay. Walled in with the others, he held out the longest. He died a hero. And now the Forsaken are rising. They demand revenge. Who would blame them? I watched them die. Soldiers and miners, sick and hungry, begging for help they knew would never come. Captain Pennington has much blood on his hands. I'm sorry. 
You've been through a lot. We have. We are, and will persist till we prevail. We should get back to the fort. We will escort you. Captain Bennington. No time. No way out. No hope. No way in. No time. No time at all. Captain Pennington, sir. Mr. McRaith, you live. There's work to be done. Work? You had work. A mission. To bring one last glimmer of hope. To gladden our hearts before the pit takes us all. You secretive bastards haven't helped. The job is done. There's no more open, little enough time. All that remains is the pit. Welcome to the last stand, McGrath. Welcome to the end. I wouldn't surrender just yet, Captain. I found Helen Priest. We brought supplies. A waste of effort on both accounts. Hardly. We saved a life. Resupplied, you may save more. For the sake of what? For the sake of days? A week, perhaps? You've saved no one. You've prolonged the terror. The dead will come. Our throats will feel their bony fingers soon enough. The end is inevitable. It is if you will not act. You're the officer. Take command. Surely you can't intend to do nothing. You sound like Priest. She has changed. Her return to Fort Jericho has made her impulsive, irrational, quarrelsome. I believe she did not fully grieve her husband's loss. Returning to the scene has, it seems, reopened the wound. It festers. She'll join the lieutenant soon enough. When our defences crumble at the last, the pit shall take us all. How do things stand, Captain, as you see them? Uh, little has changed. The dead flood from the mines. We shoot them down and gain respite. Soon, the onslaught begins anew. The clock of our extinction ticks on towards the hour. We may no more defeat the dead than we may vanquish the ocean waves. Folk have little enough hope, and you're leading them further into the darkness. I've heard the whispers, the murmurs, the plotting from the shadows. We hold till the last. We resist, till retribution rises from the pit and drags us all to hell. Well, that's something worth waiting for. I fail to see the appeal of this slow agony. How unfortunate. Because thanks to you, and the time you bought us, the agony will be all the slower. Permission to take my leave, Captain. And if I refuse it? Are you trying to recruit me, Captain? Do you really think I'd take the King's shilling? <laughs> if I were to offer enough shillings, I'm sure of it. I need no new lieutenants. But if you wish, you may stay. This key unlocks the unused watchtower. You'll bill it while you're... For years, Kate Newsmith believed she did not measure up to her sister. Now she knows that in her kindness, she is at least her sister's equal. Thick skin has paid for her sins. But what of her sister? What will Kate do now? Her people look to her, for their future, their protection, their survival. Banishes, 
May I have a word? Helen, something wrong? Apologies for disturbing your rest. I'm afraid it can't wait. What did you think of the captain? I saw an officer alone. A proud man turned to stone, perhaps, by years of war. I saw a broken man. I did not see the tyrant you described. Inaction is tyranny. He will not act, but nor will he get the hell out of the way. I do not disagree, but the captain needs help. I too was a soldier, broken and haunted. With Antea's help, I recovered. Pennington may need the same. Leave Pennington to me. The good folk of the fort need your help. You are banishers. The dead, you'll have noticed, hammer at the gates. I would like you to go into the mines and find out what enrages them so. I would like you to do what the captain will not. And while we deal with the hordes of angry spectres, what shall you be doing? When the mines are purged, I'll oust Pennington. Where do we go? There is a second tunnel into the mines. The entryway was walled shut during the quarantine. Getting there will not be easy, but the barricade should fall without too much difficulty. After that, who knows? Underground again. Wonderful. If it soothes you, I too am taking a significant risk. The captain has a penchant for locking people up and leaving them to rot. Some years ago in New Eden Town, the captain locked up an innocent woman. A fate I wish to avoid. We should go. Then it's agreed. When you're ready, you'll investigate the mines. Take the hoist to the waterfall, near the outpost you first found me. From there, it is not far to the tunnel. Keep your wits and all your luck about you. Difficult though it be to walk these dark tunnels. I'll guide you as best I can. Thank you. When you're searching for the source of the wrath of the hordes of the dead, it's nice to bring a friend. I fear their anger justified. This place knows much tragedy. What shall we find down there? The rage of the Forsaken. They trusted him. He betrayed them. He abandoned them. I doubt they can be placated. We must press on. Stay close. Sebastian Priest. In the mine you were to tend to the sick. Instead, you afflicted them. What? No! This is a, a heinous lie! I gave my life for it! You turned into a tyrant until revolt emerged among the exhausted survivors. They, they, they must have gone mad down in the dark. Their, their rage found a target in me, the, the captain's man. I died innocent. I, I died a hero. You lied to yourself, to your men, to us. You lied to your wife. Why did you really come back? I didn't! I, I never did that! It's not me! It's all a lie! I love Helen with all my heart. Pennington must pay. You must make Pennington pay for his crimes! These must be Sebastian's remains. Curious. Priest said he was the last to die. Said he shot himself when hope ran out. That someone stove this fella's head in with a pike. This was no romantic suicide. This was bloody murder. Plus, there's no ghost tie. Look. The mark from before. No ghost tie. So why did he not pale and become a spectre like the rest? Sebastian told Helen a story. 
His prominent chest wound was part of it. But it's a fiction. He spun her a lie. I'm starting to doubt the Lieutenant's ghost. I think it's an effigy of Sebastian sent to get close to Helen. Maybe even to Pennington. Not a spectre. Something more elaborate. But what? And why? if we do. You're Deborah, right? Pennington had you arrested and clapped you in chains. A broken pot locked away, forgotten, down in the dark, lift the heavy chains from her. If we do, will you talk with us? It's over. Go in peace. No peace. No pardon. Naught but darkness and decay. No. All this must stop and you must stop it. Dark decay and the maddest words of the worst of men. Whose words? Pennington's? When the maddening silence becomes the darkest night, the faintest voice is welcome as the dawn. Deborah. Why, this is mutiny. It is justice. Justice long denied. Wait. Thought you'd been killed in the mines. 
Soon will all lie dead in the mines. Neither one more word, nor a move from you. The mines are cleansed of their madness, which is more than I can say for this room. You banished the thing in a pit? Truly? It's gone? Aye, the puppeteer is no more. The siege is lifted. Don't get excited. You're still up to your neck and shite. You've still to answer for what you did, and what you did not. I do not answer to civilians, nor to mutineers. You will answer to the dead. Once a woman in chains cried out and you did not listen. This is why you're cursed. Confess. Your future, and the future of many, depends on it. I'll confess there is no future. I'll confess I led us here to make our final stand. And we still stand. To that, I'll confess, and claim the credit. We fall one by one. Then we weep, we rage, but we stay loyal and true. Even the widows must stay true. In fear, you dither while folk die. Soldiers will not long stay loyal to a coward. I do not fear a future already written. The die is cast. I dither not. I hold. I hold and watch the end unfold. There's more to this. An older guilt. A deeper fear. You may be to blame for the tragedy in the mines, Spennington, or you may not. But the puppeteer wanted you dead. Some years back, you accused a local woman of witchcraft. You locked her up. The puppeteer was quite angry about that. At last the die stopped rolling and my number has come up. I'll tell it now. I'll tell it all. When you slandered her, you knew there'd be a witch hunt. Why'd you do it? There was no slander. It was true. She was corrupt. She was evil. And she was a school teacher. Someone had to think of the children. It's horse shit, but he seems to believe it. We're getting closer to the truth. You acted irrationally. You blamed the plague on a witch, yet applied a quarantine. You recognized her in the puppeteer, didn't you? I'm sorry, puppeteer? That's what was in the minds, wasn't it? And you knew, didn't you? How long? For how long have you known? What I know and you do not would fill a library. Sebastian's sway over Helen is dangerous. If she takes charge, so does he. But Pennington is depraved and merits no saving. What's your thinking? I have faith in Helen Priest. Step down, Captain. Perhaps you may begin to wash your guilt away. Do what you must, and face the consequences. Cast the die. I will. You failed, Captain. As an officer. As a man. You brought a curse upon the people of New Eden. No. The fort needs a leader without blood on her hands. I'll do it. I'll place the blame where it belongs. How Marif, how Gunjo. To the living. Death to the dead. When 
as a man seen and done too much. As a soldier, a leader, a father. Down with tyranny. Justice prevails. If we are to survive, there is much to do, and survive we shall. For the record, beyond that door, Captain Pennington was tried and executed for his crimes. We did what was needed. The story you tell is up to you. Looks like the Nightmare's curse is lifted here. Job done. You're angry. Can tell. Of course you can. Aren't you angry? I'm more... disgusted. Disgusted by what we saw down there. Or oh, Pennington and his cowardice allowed to happen. I hope they'll burn in hell. For that I hate myself. Nothing can stand between us. Not even death. Not even death? The closer we get to my body, to the truth about what happened here, the stronger I feel. My senses rise. It's as if I can taste the silence, smell the scent of wood smoke, feel the warmth of your body, feel Deborah's wrath. I feel it as if it were my own. I know her rage. But that anger of mine, that fear, I thought when I left home, I'd left them behind. Past is the past. You still get to choose your future. Times like this, old wounds can ache. Seems normal. It's not just that. I thought I'd healed. I feel like I'd taken ten steps backwards. So much so that the sister I thought was gone for good seems to be winding her way back to me. Your sister? Ayomi Day, wasn't it? No. As a child, before I left Cuba, I had a friend. I chose to call her my sister. That night, the night I died, I dreamed of her. I dreamed of Calendre. Are you sure it was a dream? Is that why you left the schoolhouse without me? Yes. It must have been a dream. She wasn't there. I mean, how could she have been there? But I heard her voice. I'd swear on it. How could that be? Dreams can be vivid. It can be difficult to separate them from reality. I was awake, Red. What did you hear her say? I don't know. I don't remember. I think she said we were family. Never to be divided. She's after my job. She can't have it. I'm your family now. Nothing's tearing us apart. No. Not even death. Still angry? Gloriously. The Banishers are here. Already? How unfortunate. You called us. Did I? I thought I had more time. In the end, it runs out for all of us. As I depart this old carcass, I leave no burning heart behind.
Go or stay. To prevail, you must first set your heart at peace. When at last you face the nightmare, you must both be clear on what you want. You must... What do you mean? It is not for me to give you answers. Only to prepare you for what awaits. Then we can all go to sleep. Seeker doesn't hate you, Rory. She's just not used to being trusted. Protect her. For me. You're too late, old moss head, as ever. Old Mosshead is no more. He'll never drink from your skull now, will he? Another ancient promise broken. But what about me? How do I live now? You're all I ever had, and all I'll ever have. <laughs> Can I set the world on fire now? I just want to see it burn. A pity. Farewell, then. She took me in when my father, when no one else wanted me. She taught me to stand up straight.
Leave her be. For now. Hmm. What will become of Seiko now? She'll try to make sense of her pain. Or perhaps she'll sit with it a while. Hmm. Or she'll try to kill it. Grief knows no rule book. When I returned from the war, I walked the wet streets of London for a long time. All I could feel was my heart digging a hole deep inside my chest. After what I had seen, I had done. I just wanted the pain to stop. I wanted oblivion. Your ghosts were killing you. They almost pushed you to insanity, but you pulled through. I let myself be drowned. You're the one who pulled me out. Poetic, if melancholic. What's going on, Red? I feel lost. I can't stand myself. I can barely stand it. Look at you. Something eats me from within, and it's growing. I don't know what's happening. I'm scared. I scare me too. I am untethered from the world. But through you, I still feel like myself. I cling to this. The closer we get to my return, the further from life I feel. I care nothing for the living. I only care for what I can take from them. Do you feel that way about me too? No, of course not. What are we doing? We're reclaiming our world. The only way we can. Are you sure this is what you want? We made an agreement. Are you having second thoughts? I don't know. Maybe. Ceridian's death has changed things for you. Yeah. She had power, purpose. She had love and she still chose to leave. Maybe she's right. Should we reconsider? It may not be too late to change our minds. But you must promise me, Red, whatever we decide, we stick to it. We cannot change our minds again. I swear it, my love. This is it. Backed by the Banishers, Helen Priest dethroned Captain Pennington. His dark truths were unearthed. Some secrets remain buried. The survivors must now set aside old sins and build themselves lives worth living. But can Helen Priest lead them into the future, chained as she is to her past? Friends, find fortitude in our success. Exiled from our homes by the devil's machinations, we congregate before the Lord in this new meeting house. We gather, we worship, we overcome. And we shall be well protected by the holy ward my son now makes under my instruction. For I have spent hours countless in your service, poring through books and papers, devouring the oeuvre of my peers, that our meeting house be safe. 
Fairfax Haskell, for whom the word pompous was invented. Half built? Yes. Open to the four winds? Yes. But already it is resplendent with our faith. A shining reminder of our renewed belief in better days. McCraith, Mr. McCraith. <laughs> I, I thought you. I thought you. What happy portent, what most excellent news. What blessings. I applaud your valorous deeds. O oh, fate, I say, dead, sir. I thought you dead. Maybe I am. Do not make light of such matters, my friend, for the devil's wrath is wide awake, and his claw scratches at our door, metaphorically speaking. Well, I'm alive. I promise. My friends, I shall deliver this sermon another time. The battle with the Devil's Legions is ongoing, and Mr. McCraith and I have much to discuss. Thank you, Lammy. Behold this miracle of ours, Mr. McCraith. Exiled we, yet in our darkest hour, we find the moral vigor to build this humble monument to resilience. But you and I must speak of darker matters. For we, erudite men of higher learning, know that evil yet walks. There is much work to be done. Indeed there is. Yes, yes. Forgive the inelegance of my welcome. You are alone. Do I surmise that Miss Duarte is no more? I'd rather not talk about it. Blessed is the man in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. I'm so sorry for your loss. Grief is a journey, long and painful, but you do not walk the road alone. I promise you. Oh, I know. I know. In time, God healed my wounds. May you two find peace. Now, I regret that even at this most burdensome time for you, I must move with haste to business and beg once more for your help. What's going on? It must be serious if you're asking for my help. Since your defeat at the Meeting House, the devil, heartened and emboldened, goes from strength to strength. He insinuates himself among my people, reveling in the suffering of the disease he unleashes upon us. It pits one against the other. Suspicion tears this community apart once again. All this to weaken my people and lead them away from the light of God. In times of disease, you need doctors, and I'm no doctor. We'll not treat the symptoms, we'll tear out the root. An agent of the devil walks among us. A witch? You must find her, or him, as it may be. You and I share great expertise. But I am a man of position. Well, you, sir, are much more familiar with field work. Go, meet my people, walk amongst them. Learn which of them secretly serves the demon, that we may expunge this evil malady from our body politic. What makes you think there is a witch at work here? Aye, sir, I'm a man of God and intellect. I can read the signs. When a so-called mystery disease afflicts half of my people overnight, there can be only one culprit. It is the devil's doing, sir. Probably through one of his servants. For you see, I understood immediately that the water in the well had been tainted. There are no strangers here. You could self-accept it. No one has fled. The guilty woman 
Your man, I suppose, remains within the village. As evil walks, the evil are emboldened, but this witch shall see her downfall. Or his, of course. As did the last one, as will the next. Some years ago, you may have heard tell of this, I made my name on the execution of a terrible witch. It pains me that I must do it once more. I am no witch hunter. My business is with the lingering dead. For a fee, yes, I know. But you can't deny evil practitioners exist. A few years ago, I had to cleanse this community from such a threat. Do you mean Deborah? You know a little already, I gather. Yes. Deborah. The crooked school teacher. When Deborah showed her true nature, I was proud to pass judgment upon her. She earned her punishment. Her mask was a good one. As if butter would not melt upon her tongue. But she cannot fool a man of faith and intellect. No, sir. You cannot. You'll not mind me saying it, but for a Puritan paradise, you seem to get more than your fair share of witches. God has not forsaken us. But someone here does the devil's work. Find me a witch, Mr. McCraith. Return this place to the Lord. I'm a working man, Governor, but the Lord does seem happy to pay, so I'll do what I can. I'll take my leave of you, Governor. Of course. Outside, you must take the stairs. While you're with us, the first house on the left shall be your home. You're the Governor's son, right? I... Uh, yes, sir. Lamentation Haskell. Friends call me Lammy. Oh, they would if I had any. Please, call me Lammy. I have so many questions, sir. So many questions. But I suspect this is not the time. No, not the time. But perhaps you may help me anyway. Me? Why, if I can help, I'd be honoured. Your father believes there is a Harrow's witch. Have you noticed anyone acting strange? I... I'd answer, sir, I surely would, only things being as they are, everyone is acting strange. The curse brought illness, illness brought division, division has led to strife. We could do with some healing, sir, we could. We need you to bring us peace. Good day to you, Lammy. Good day to you, sir. How are you, Mr. Bachelor? I do not need the services of a heretic today. And nor do the people of New Eden. He seems pleasant. Seen anything strange of late? Do you speak of the disease eating at the fabric of our fair community? We've sealed the well, closed homes and houses, and said our prayers. It has not worked. Apart from that, have you noticed anyone behaving strangely? I have to ask. I have seen the alewife, Mistress Barrow, lurking by the well, hands in her pockets, clutching at her herbals. And as I think of it, before his house burned down with his wife and brother in it, Caleb Watson and the alewife had a sharp exchange of words. Twere as if she'd cursed him. If there is a Harrow's Witch, I'd start looking there. If I wanted a word with her, where would I find her? She tends to the alehouse, brewing God knows what witchery and mischief in her cauldron. I must take my leave of you, sir. God keep you, for I shall not. Ah, oh, the famed and famous banisher, the one and only Red McWraith. Have we met? I was at the meeting house. You've got guts. I like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ooh, politeness. Gives me the shits. I'm Phoebe Walcott. I buy and sell. Now then, what's your pleasure? So, have you noticed any strange behaviour of late? Apart from my own? Yes. 
So much so that now I am almost normal. Caleb Watson, for example. Now he, my friend, is really strange. Is he now? He used to be such a nice man. Now he's aggressive and he smells like the Christmas cat at Easter. Where can I find Caleb Watson? Well now, seeing as he's our cobbler, you'll find him in his workshop. It's justice. Start anew. Shite on these people. They can't hurt us. But how could you make him kiss it again? Oh there. Are you all right, sir? We're closed. Uh, oh, now. Out with you. Leave. Leave. I can tell from your sunny demeanour that you won't mind me asking you a couple of questions. I'm Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. I'm searching the area for evidence of witchcraft. And you, I can tell, are itching to help me. Show your shite and shapes, goose peddler. No witches here. Only myself, Caleb Watson. The governor bade me make the rounds. Is anyone acting strange? Why would he ask you that? Everyone keeps secrets. And I have a talent for uncovering them. I ain't got no secrets. I ain't done no wrong. Search me house, if you don't believe me. See for yourself. And when you're done, if you're any kind of man, you'll come back here, doff your cap, apologise, then shite off and never come back. If you're looking for someone acting strangely, I think you've found your man. I'll be leaving you alone for now. A man content with his own company is never alone. <laughs> you hear that? Good one, right? You've done enough sniffing. Hmm? Tired of the smell of your own ass. You said you had no secrets. That was a lie, am I right? Everyone has secrets. I can smell your secrets from here, mate. A pox on you. And a pox on your questions, too. You'll not take him head on. You must take your time. Outflank him. There's burned debris out back. I found bone in it. Where does it come from? You must have little business if you spend your time sifting through my rubbish. It came from the house. Probably. I read your letter to Ruth. It's clear you loved her. Were you telling the truth about Alexander's infidelity? My name is Caleb Watson. And before God and all present, I swear that the letter I wrote to Ruth was a load of shite. Lusting for his beloved Ruth, I set out to ruin Alexander's name because I'm a greedy little prick. You're frank. You don't sound like you regret it, though. No. The past the past. Dead and buried. My brother is but a lingering memory. It was terrible what happened to your wife and brother. It might have helped if you'd mentioned that. You must be grieving. Do you mind if I ask where they're buried? Shite on me, shite bag brother. And shite on you, too. They're both deep in the dirt up at God's Acre, and I'll speak no more of it. What's going on at God's Acre, Caleb? Shite off with your God's Acre, and good riddance to both. God's Acre concerns you not. You need to tell me what happened here. Stop hiding. Nothing happened. I buried, I buried all. Quiet, you. And you can shite off. Taking your nothing happened with you. Shite off. We've been to God's Acre. Quite a tale it told us. You're not Caleb, are you? Or at least not entirely. Ah. Can't fog you. Alexander Watson. Long tale short, Caleb tried to bring his dead wife back. And I live here now. So many questions. Where to even start? Do both of you share Caleb's body? Share? <laughs> 
No. This house of flesh is mine. But because I am a generous man, I allow my brother to live in the cellar. We were twins. I was the rotten half, they said. But who's the rotten half now? He was trying to bring his wife back. How did you end up in the mix? Caleb made a fine cobbler, a poor brother, a worse husband, and a truly terrible witch. The ritual went to shite, because, <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> There's something else you should know, if you don't know it already. I'm not alone. I completed the ritual. My darling Ruth is in here too. You used the ritual to bring Ruth's spirit into Caleb's body. Why? Love moves a soul to strange endeavours. We deserve a better life. I set myself to claiming it. I understand your anger. More so your desire. But what of Ruth's? Did you consider what she wanted? Caleb stole a life from me. But he also stole Ruth's voice. She shrank beneath him. Of course she wanted a second chance at life. I'd like to hear this from Ruth. May I please speak with her? No! We've carved ourselves out a little happiness at last. I'll not have you break it. Please, leave us alone. Give us this. We need to speak to her, one way or another. If he won't tell us anything, perhaps the house Ruth died in will. I'll be leaving you alone for now. Alone? <laughs> Not really. Stop right there, you rank ramp! Whatever you found, it ain't yours! You buried Ruth's heart in the ashes of the house that killed her. I find that odd. You, a ghost, went digging in the ashes of a dead woman's house. You're ill-positioned to call me odd. Don't think I haven't felt your presence before. Stow your tongue while I speak with Ruth. Ruth? Can you hear me? Can you speak? Puck off and die! I'm in charge here! No! Hush ye, Alexander. I'll speak. I'm Ruth. I hear you. I'm Antea Duarte. We're here to help. Oh, I'm glad. Please, end this nightmare. Help me. Look! Go to hell in a bag of shite. We're fine. And you have not the right, you hear? You've not the right. Her heart! Give it back! Hear my voice and show your face. No more does he silence me. We may speak. Help me, please. Who taught Caleb the resurrection ritual? To say it was taught would mean he'd learned it. He read it off a page. As a sorcerer, Caleb makes a fine cobbler. Thing about Caleb, he was a good listener. As he worked, clients had bend his ear. The Haskell boy, for one. As Caleb pinned the governor's shoes, young Lammy would talk magic. N nonsense, really. But Caleb was listening. Wait. Me Lammy Haskell gave Caleb the resurrection ritual. After Lammy mentioned the ritual, Caleb became obsessed with it. He begged. Lammy in his misplaced generosity, gave it. Caleb was intent on dark work. Lammy furnished written instructions. Caleb's letter changed your life. How did it feel at the time? He tore me in two. I loved Alexander, but I deserved to marry a man who would be true. 
Caleb seemed decent. I, I believed he loved me. I thought I'd married the better brother, but I'd married a liar. A liar and a devil. <sighs> and yet, not even he deserves this. No one deserves this. When did you learn that Caleb had lied to you about his brother's infidelity? Who goes worse shod than the shoemaker's wife? There was no one moment. One day I knew what he'd done, and knew I'd known it for the longest time. Alexander had his flaws, but he loved the whole of me. Now I'm sewn into a festering sack with the quivering remnants of my husband and the angry ghost of his dead brother. Please, let me out. Ruth, your husband Caleb's botched resurrection ritual brought you back, but allowed his brother Alexander to take you hostage. Once we deal with the Watson brothers, you shall be free to ascend. Do what you must. I'll suffer it if it leaves me free to go. No! We can stay. Please, Ruth, let us stay. Look at you. Your counterfeit, a sham of a thing. Your so-called life is no life at all. Caleb lied and stole your love. But when the time was right, you lied and stole his body. We're ending this nonsense now. Caleb Watson, your past saving. We can but grant you the mercy of oblivion. But, but what about me? What about Ruth? Ruth is free to go. I shall have my rest now. Thank you. Governor. May I help you, Mr. McCraith? I have to admit, this is an unusual case. Yes, yes, but have you solved it? I believe so. But the culprit was not responsible for the plague. At least not directly. Have you found the witch or have you not? Someone here has been dabbling in some dark magic. I have the name. So? What are you waiting for? Don't you want to hear the name? I do not need to. The principle is what matters. Not exactly. The name is Lamentation Haskell. No, it can't be. My son is studious. Curious, too curious at times, perhaps. But he does not have a bad bone in his heart. He showed Caleb Watts in a ritual. The cobbler used it and became possessed. Even if true, it would only mean my son was exposed to corruption. It happened before. Bring me proof, banisher. Find the real source of evil. Since when has the governor required proof? I'll get it. Mark me. I must find your son, governor. Sooner rather than later. His interests take him hither and thither. If he isn't here, he must be working on the outskirts. He's been sprucing up one of the abandoned houses there. I ordered them emptied when the sickness hit. Yeah, take the gate key. Go there. See for yourself. You're wrong about him. You're wrong about my son. Needless to say that I count, of course, on your discretion. <laughs> 
So, you can see me. Aren't you full of surprises, young Master Hasker? You may talk. A banisher ghost. Amazing. How on God's earth did you find me? Never mind that. Thank the Lord you did. Thought I was going to grow old in here. As hiding places go, the void is quite the choice. Yes, an amazing place. Or plane? World? The Aralu is not easily described, but it makes a fascinating study. Tell me, how did you get past the Guardian beneath the mill? Did you use a decoy? We fought it. Don't change the subject. You fought it? Of course you did! A good thing too. I was starting to think it was wise to me tricks. Oh, but I have so many questions. This isn't a social call, kid. And we're the ones with the questions. Oh. Oh. Of course. From the looks of this place, you're knee-deep in research. What are you doing here, exactly? Searching for the origin of the Harrow's Plague, of course. And I have a theory on the subject. Of course you do. Go on, then. Now, at first, I believed the water poisoned, but my father sealed the well, and yet folk remained sick. They looked for witchcraft, a foolish, uneducated suspicion, yes, but with some truth concealed behind it. You see, the Aralu taints New Eden. Its influence leeches into the Harrows. The evidence is everywhere. Can you prove that? Where's your evidence? In New Eden, the threshold between our plane and this is thin. Even I, a novice, may reach the frontier and then go beyond. I also believe it happened before. Some years ago, New Eden was hit by another epidemic. Yes, we learned of it in Fort Jericho. I believe that first epidemic was caused by the porosity of the frontier between New Eden and the Aralu. Although, where theirs was an affliction of burning flesh, ours is a corruption of mind and spirit. And I believe I have found its source. There is a substance, a strange ooze. You may have noticed it. This, I believe, is the true source of the Harrow's poison. It carries a particular stink, on the scent of which I experience first confusion, then a loss of control over my limbs. What do you expect to find at the source of the ooze? To find a cure. The ooze seeps into our world, sickening us. I may be able to stop it. Unfortunately, I cannot reach the source. The Aralu is a formidable place. Tricky. A maze constantly evolving, changing, reshaping itself. The Isthmus, for example. I found an oozing crack in the ground. The terrain then remade itself, and I can get to it no longer. Perhaps we might be able to find a way through and take a look at that source. Would you? That would be splendid. Would you mind taking notes? You see ghosts. You stroll the void as if it were your garden. You possess and share forbidden rituals. Who are you really? I'm Lammy Haskell, and I'm a man of many sciences. I am in fact a true pursuer. That raises more questions than it answers. What are the pillars of the universe? Which principles underpin existence? As occultists, do we change the world or scratch upon its surface? Each discipline I embrace peels back a new layer of reality. I'm yet at the beginning and see where I already stand. Amazing, no? You did not find the void breach beneath the mill by accident. You had help. Who taught you? I did my research. Suddenly, you're a man of few words. I'd rather not involve those not present. Discretion, you understand.
Your father is convinced a witch poisoned his well. Caleb Watson was cursed by a ritual you gave him. I'd focus if I were you. We must counter the devil with knowledge of his tricks. That, my father always said, is the purest of God's work. Ah, I can imagine your father saying that. When I was ten, he gave me my initiation. Demonology, sir, as he would say. He saw me as his heir. Then, of a sudden, the books were forbidden. So I stole them. The very same books he'd forced upon me as a boy. I understand them where he does not. I did no wrong. Apart from a little theft. Let's go take a closer look at that ooze, then. And with that sorrow gone, I can leave. Do be careful. My home is your home. If you need anything, help yourself. The Aralu is not your home, Lamy. But thank you. The devil still breathes to her mouth. We are cursed, and you are sterling. Clemency, Antipas, please. The woman has been jailed. As per custom, she will face trial, and justice will be brought to this community. Coming from a magic user himself. But can you or your demonologist discern it really be trusted? How dare you insinuate such blasphemy? I'm a man of faith. Then do what God commands of you. Governor, we ask for safety. If we do not get it, there will be consequences. Alice, oh, can it be good? Are you? Silence! Confess! Make them speak! If we speak, so you listen!
The Lord's promise of salvation from hell pleases them. The Lord's salvation from misery and sin here on earth does not. This doesn't look like salvation from misery and sin. The wicked pray for deliverance from the fires of hell while piling the kindling high. They proclaim their love for their Lord, yet in his name, they serve themselves. Their self-regard crumbles in the light of their hateful iniquities. So, so true. Mr. McCraith, my friend, I'm so glad you agree. Now, the wicked man never questions... I have your answers. What? Yes, good. Perhaps we should discuss this privately, if you'll give me just a moment. It's quite the story. You might not wish to hear it. Neither may the good people hear. Please, this is not the time. We want to hear the story. Let the Banisher speak. Tell them, Red. Tell them good. Ah, there's a story that starts with a question. A question for you, Governor. And maybe for all the good people of New Eden. If I give you a witch, will you do what you did to Deborah Comenius? Comenius, say you? The schoolteacher walked with the devil and paid the appropriate price. That's the beginning of the history and also its end. Is it, though? Now, I've learned much about Deborah Comenius and what happened to her, and it tells a very different tale. And what story, pray you, does it tell? It tells the story of a woman, a teacher, living peaceably among friends until there came a plague. In fear, the good people went to their governor. The devil walks among us, they said, and you must save us or we will find someone who will. This governor knew he could not save them, but he could give them a witch. The train band captain shackled the school teacher and locked her away. She would confess or she would be judged. Deborah Comenius was a witch, Mr. McCraith. She was the devil's tool, and worse, much worse. You're a pompous coward, fearful of anyone different, as human as that is. There must be a man to judge, or there is no order. A man to make the judgment, and a man to enforce it. Of all people, you know this. I live and let live. I choose only for the dead. I choose for the living. 
These people are sinners, sir, and must be led back to the light. This is my mandate, my duty. Admit it. You toy with magic. You don't understand. You, sir, are jealous. I, sir, am tired. I've done my job, fulfilled my contract. I've found the source of the curse. The poison below the well is no more. No thanks to you. Aha! Poison it was, then. The weapon of the wicked, to weaken the people's will. What was it? Belladonna? Hemlock? Foxglove? Betrayal! Truth unspoken, secrets and lies, wrongs, basically, your wrongs. The wrongs you visited upon Deborah Comenius, the wrongs that led to her death. She died at the hand of the body politic. She died at all our hands. Most of all, she died at her own. She died because she would not submit. Twas not my plan to kill her, stupid, stubborn woman. Why did she not confess? I would have granted clemency. I would have shown her mercy. You had the power to stop the madness. But instead, you chose to let it run all the way to its barbaric conclusion. You brought the curse down on New Eden. Then you called we banishers in to fix your mistake. You boast of your knowledge of demons and spirits, but in truth, you master nothing. You're a peacock. All show and no meat. I'm not here today to bring justice. But this man, your governor, brought death to your doors. <laughs> no. He deserves blaming. And shame on me if I don't do it. It's best. No. <sighs> Friends, have I ever not served the interests of our community? Have I not protected you? Have I not loved you? For good! Far from it. Then, who will protect us? I will. While Mr. McCraith fights the curse of New Eden, I will protect the people of the Harrows. Or at least, I'll try. Now let's all return to our homes and pray for forgiveness and uh, the strength to bear the consequences of our actions. For your fee. One of the many debts my father left me. You'd best put your own debts first, young Master Haskell. Don't I know it?
So, what now? What did Ceridian say when we first met her? Once we'd weakened the Nightmare's influence, we could use the Void to enter its lair. Deborah's grip on the settlers has diminished. We'll return to Ceridian's island. From there, the Void Breach will take us back to New Eden Town. Just like that, eh? Well, yes, just like that. Something bothering you. But aren't we rushing things a little? We've lost too much time already. We have a nightmare to confront, remember? Sometimes I hate the world. Another free woman, bright, sensitive, kind, murdered by a craven rabble too weak to face its own mediocrity. Cowards hiding behind fake virtue. And for what? They won't even say her name. Why? Why her? They know no better. They know only fear and hate what they cannot understand. Especially when a woman is involved. It matters not now anyway. A woman died for nothing and it matters not? What matters is what we do now. Which wrong we set right. I've taught you well. When I left Cuba, anything could have befallen me. I was bright, free, talented. Though I had the wrong tongue, the wrong sex, the wrong skin. I defied life. I expected so much more from the world. I was arrogant. Arrogant to believe I needed no one. To shut out my mother and experience curandera and listen instead to my sister. Your childhood friend. What happened? I had little and wanted more. A dangerous thing when you have our type of talent. Anything could have befallen me. But it didn't. But something did happen. Something happened to Deborah. And then something happened to you. And now... Now we are both paying that price. You still have your life. What's it worth if it's played by the murder of all those I killed? We made a choice, Rory. You made it willingly. Aye. I did. Look, all this is a lot to endure. We're both exhausted. I know I am. I cannot tire. I know. I know how hard it's been for you. You have no idea. None at all. I'll do my best to understand, if you'll let me. We should have faith. Look at us. We'll get to where we're going. Shut up, Red. Shut up. This isn't about... This isn't about what we have conquered or what we have achieved or how far we have journeyed. Look at us. Look at me. I loathe what I've become. Can't you see that? I was trying to help. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. Good night. Antea. Antea? I would have gone with you. Not funny. I have to walk to the stupid bloody island. Oh, 
Is he there? This is only take a moment. See? Ah. Well, throwing my weapons through your will is a little unsettling. Is it worse to lose your faith in your fathers than it is to lose faith in yourself? Those in the harrows who lived would be wise to look inwards, to reflect, and then to pay penance. But none carry a greater burden than young Lamentation Haskell. How will he guide the faltering faithful when he has so little faith in himself? I didn't expect you back. I'm working my way back to New Eden Town. There, you're on your own. I'm trying to track someone down, and I was hoping you could help me. I doubt I'll be much use, but I'll help you if I can. So, I found your name in an old letter. It was addressed to someone by the name of Grace. It was written by Deborah Comenius. You're tenacious. I'll give you that. But must you push so? Deborah wrote of a cabin in the woods. Could this Grace person have found it? I don't know. It was all a very long time ago. I had forgotten her. Did Grace ask you for help? No. Grace Pennington vanished. No one ever saw her again. Grace Pennington? As in Captain Saul Pennington? Pennington had a daughter, and you knew her. I knew her, but not well. Deborah had her in the school and spoke of her from time to time. Shy as a porcupine and twice as prickly, as I recall. Deborah wrote the letter in February 1688. When did Grace disappear? Months later, Pennington accused Deborah of being a witch. In my recollection, that moment overshadows all others. Could Grace have survived alone out here in the woods? Possibly. But could she remain unseen? No. All thought she'd left New Eden. Gone west, perhaps, into the wilds. Does the name Seeker mean anything to you? It sounds less a name than a calling, but neither mean anything to me. We done. One more question. Did the school teacher keep a cabin in the woods? Deborah spent much time walking the woods, trying to understand New Eden, she said. Now that you mention it, I remember a snowstorm. She spent three days in a hut not far from here. Southeast, across the drawbridge, along the path towards the mine, if it's still there. Goodbye to you for now, Kate. Banishes. Excuse the clatter. I've seen worse. Good day to you, Helen. I did not count on seeing you two again. I take it you've returned for a reason. What can you tell me about a young woman by the name of Grace? It seems you already know some of the story. It was a long time ago, but I'll do my best to fill in the gaps. What happened to her? As I heard it told, one day Grace just wasn't there anymore. How was their relationship? I believe it was... stormy, as you'd expect between a commander and his disobedient daughter. I do think he loved her. But as far as anyone ever saw, he never shed a single tear for her. Later, after he exiled her, did the captain try to find his daughter? Not to my knowledge. He did not set off in search of her, nor did he send men. At the time, I thought it strange. Still do. I'll never understand how a man could reject his only daughter. And that, my inquisitive banisher friends, 
is all I know about the matter. Go gentle, Helen. Failing that, go hard. Well, ho there. What a pleasant surprise. I was fair and sure that I'd never see you again. Very often. Mm. Far away, God willing. Build bridges, say the wise, that people may better understand each other. Build a jetty, say I, so that a ship may come and we can leave. New Eden is a fascinating study for you and I. But for ordinary folk, it is, as I've heard it put, a shite hole. Leaving sounds right to me, if these people learn from their mistakes. They repent, Mistress Duarte. A new start elsewhere, away from the place in which they sinned, will do them good. Spoken like a leader. I fear, however, that not everyone shall listen. I fear what shall befall them if they stay behind. We found a page ripped from a book. Here, do you recognize it? Let me see. Is this from the Trismegistus riddles? <laughs> yes, it seems to be. Why would you bring me one mildewed page from an amusing but harmless little book? Why would you fail to disclose that you'd given another ritual to another friend? It was a long time ago. I said after Caleb I'd distribute no more rituals, and that's what I've done. Uh, not done. We know. But we're looking for Grace Pennington now, and we were hoping you'd help us find her. Who? Really, boy? Oh, I'm sorry, Mistress Antea. You said Grace's name, and it is my reflex to protect her. Ever heard of someone named Seeker? Seeker? No. Sounds like a title, like my true pursuer. This Seeker... Is she Grace? Is she alive? Do you know where she is? We think she's Grace. We hope she's still alive. We're trying to find out. We think she's hidden herself away behind your dissimulation spell. Uh, then you'll need to unravel it. Shouldn't be too difficult once you're armed with the salient facts. When was the last time you saw Grace Pennington? It had to be a few days after I brought her the cloaking ritual. When I returned to visit, the hut had disappeared. Which makes sense now that I think of it. That's it? You never again tried to find your best friend. Your only friend. Well, you see... Some weeks later, the first whispers of witchcraft started to fly about town. I kept my head down, and Grace was better off out of it. I was right. And I'm glad she escaped. Strange to think of her again after so long. How does the ritual work? It creates illusions so effective that they deceive even the keenest eye. There are more effective cloaking spells, but the Trismegistus riddles do have a simple elegance. The short version, please. Ending with how we break it. Yes, yes, of course. To achieve that, all you need is the caster's full name and the symbol used to make fast the illusion. Grace Pennington and a triangle pointing downwards. Well then, now all you need is a simple counterspell from the same book and... Oh, my. What now? I'm afraid I left my copy in the Araloo. In the void. That's just great. Just great. Yes, but in my defence, once you've retrieved the book, dispelling Grace's illusion will be like a walk in the park, comparatively speaking. Thank you for your help. Could you tell Grace that I'm still her friend. I'd be glad to see her again. Once we found her, we'll be glad to tell her.
Let the veil of unknowing be lifted. Let us see through the eyes of Grace Pennington. Ceridian? You're surprisingly slow, even for a banisher. You're late. Or early. At last we find you. Missed me that much, did you? You could have hurried. You always think you have more time. And suddenly, you don't. It wasn't in vain. We have come far and learned much. I hope so. But don't think you have it all figured out. You're still banishers, after all. We are indeed, Grace. So, you know. I know you're Pennington's daughter, I... Still, can I see the family resemblance? In the end, neither could he. I must have hurt. Does it matter now? The captain is no more, and... Till the end, so was his daughter. I defied him. I sought forbidden knowledge and stepped beyond the boundaries. At the end of that most painful of journeys, Grace was dead. And Seeker was born. Yes, it hurt. But it was worth it. I accept it now. I accept it all. Ceridian has left a hollow, and I am called to fill it. I accept I am ready for my role in this world. Are you ready for yours? The time has come for us to go back to New Eden and face the nightmare. Yes. Balance must be restored. You must face your fate and end the curse. Ceridian said the only way back was through the void. But the pond seems broken. We need your help. Of course you do. We're listening. Remember Ceridian's words. If you were to defeat the Nightmare, your hearts must be open to each other. No barriers. Your bond must be strong. We've never been stronger. This Void Breach is not like the others. This one... leaks. This one sits at the rotten core of the entire region. You must leave whatever still burns in your hearts at the threshold. If you don't, the Void will kill you. Do you know where in New Eden Town the Void shall lead us? The trick is to focus on your happiest memories and let them take you there. At least that's how it's always worked for me. We'll try. And when at last you succeed, I too shall return to New Eden Town. I shall see you there. In the fields outside Havana, the air is thick and hot this time of year. The downpour lasts for days. I used to lie on the grass, face to the sky, and let the rain wash over me. I'd come home soaked through, smelling of salt and dirt, and drove my mother insane. I never thought I'd hear myself say this. But I miss it. I miss home. Tell me about your mother. She was tall. Eyes like jeweled daggers, flashing sharp one moment, pure beauty and poise the next. She was about as predictable as the weather. It made me nervous. I doubt the years have softened her. In her defense, I was a decidedly insolent child. I should have written. I should have taken the time to visit. And I should have told you, as often as I felt it, how deeply in love I am with your tenacity. You seize the light and cling to it. No matter what. I am stubborn when I want to be. I'm also charming as hell. You have your moments. And we'll have many more. You and me. Always. Thank you. 
for standing by my side through it all, for everything. Into the fray, then. Always. What is it? Baggage I may need to finally face. Let's press on. At last you visit Calendre, your bestest friend. We are not friends, and your name is not Calendre. <laughs> Perhaps I should name myself by what called me to you. Your weariness? Your solitude? Your arrogance? You cannot play your own tricks with me, Kalendre. I am stronger now. So much stronger. <laughs> Bold of you to claim for a very dead banisher. I was a little girl when we met. You used me, manipulated me, and made me believe that was love. However arrogant, however angry I was, you changed me, disfigured me. I abandoned my home, I fled from everything and everyone. I thought I had to be alone so that you could never happen again. For that, I forgive myself. But you, Calendre, no. You I do not forgive. <laughs> what will you do when you have sacrificed your lover's conscience so to reclaim your body? Will you forgive yourself then? The souls we banish end up in the void. I know this now. I pity them. I pity you. I may have needed you then, but I don't need you now. Not for my own closure. Not for anything. Antea, Antea. Such a clever girl. So good with words of power. Is that how you seduced your little pet here? <laughs> My name is Nasuku, and I am the relentless servant of the Queen of Kerr. The hell? Come, stay a while, stay forever. time no not alone Charles visits from time to time we talk that's not Charles Charlie had his ascent do you remember oh yes I remember it's all very foggy do we ever mend the wounds of true love lost Esther do you know me Antea. Yes, I know you. 
You come to Red as Charles comes to me. How very good of you. Dearest Esther, I died. I am a ghost. You know, I'd have liked to join your games. You three. Chasing ghosts and whatnot. I learn fast. But not today. Today feels like a dream. Goodbye, Hester. Perhaps we'll meet again. Perhaps we shall. It's so very pleasant to speak to new old friends. From time to time. To time. It is strange to be back. It is strange. To sleep near the place where you died. Still, rest you should. You'll need it. You can't bathe twice in the same river. It's not the same river and you're not the same man. And yet nothing shall ever be the same again. But what really worries me is the ritual to bring you back. I've never done anything like it before. Nor have I. I suppose we must trust that it shall work. And that you'll be back. For better or worse. Since we returned to New Eden, I've felt like something's on your mind. What are you not telling me? That night in this room, I asked you for caution. I worried you'd act rashly and you promised me you would not. Then you did it anyway. I thought you'd gone to the meeting house without me. I died to save you. Is that why your ghost returned? Is that why you stayed? Yes. I stayed because I was angry. Angry with you. I think I've known that for a while now. The anger lingers. Part of me resents you yet. For my pain and my fear. For my suffering. For my dying. I resent you. And they, uh, I am truly sorry. I know you are. But soon, I'll be back. Then we'll both bathe in this new river, together. So, the circle is complete. Do you return to the beginning? Or is it the beginning of your return? A paradox. How clever. How it pleases you to play with time. I do not play. Deborah, we know what happened to you. We know what they did to you. What they did? What they do? I shatter yet. We're not here to hurt you. You have my body and I want it back. That's all. Help us. Because we can help you. No, you cannot. Enough. You are me. Yet you oppose me. They murdered us. Make them pay. No. They do not deserve our rage, not these two. 
Oh, deserve our wrath. They crushed the breath from us. You know this. You asked for this. Not anymore. It's over. You have been heard. The truth is out. No! Come back! Feed upon the pain, the treachery, the outrage! But no more. It hurts. Behold my wrath! win. All of them. Enough pain now. There must be a reckoning. The pain may end right now. The reckoning is here. Spare me your compassion for it comes far too late. Who are you? I am retribution. A word. An idea. But who are you? I am her fury. No longer. I am their nightmare! You were. You believe you've won. It will not be so easy. For I will end your dreams. Is that an end to it? Yes. If you want it to be. Are you sure? In your hand you weigh my death, the last stone laid upon my broken body. I'm so very sorry. Will you leave? Are you ready? I have lingered so very long. Where now will I go? I don't know. A better place, I believe. A quiet place. Quiet is good. Deborah Comenius, mere words can ill describe your suffering. And if they could, I'd not utter them now. Enough wrong has been done you. Your tale is told, and we thank you for it. You are hurt, and free to go.
Hey, I'm right here. Aye, you are. It's time for the Lesser Palingenesis. Time to bring you home. From flesh to word, word to heart. From flesh to word, word to heart. Air to fire, fire to earth. I'm hollowing. It's working. Air to fire, fire to earth. Ending to beginning, indivisible. Death to the living. Life to the dead. Ending to beginning, indivisible. Death to the living. Life to the dead. Antea. Antea! Liar. What? You swore on it, Rory McGraith. You swore you'd bring me back. Step away, Banisher. That's not Antea. Oh. At our first meeting, I took your measure. I found you wanting how I was right. What the hell? Where's Antea? You have failed her. Again. Deborah! Enough games. Let them go. Let us go. Hush, child! Uh. The adults are talking. No! Leave her! She's innocent! Innocence is another name for buried guilt. She's not done with us. Not by a long way. Not for a long time. Find me. Find us. Betrayer, oathbreaker, rat! You forsook your one true love! For this, you deserve a reward. The same reward over and over. No. Let her go. Please. Let her go. I beg you, no. Take me instead. Let her go. Cowardice, anger, treachery. This and more is the stuff of our tragedy. Zealotry, ignorance, hubris. The list of human failings is endless, and in this fertile soil grows all of our miseries. Though Antea and Red won many battles against a devious and relentless foe, right now, the war seems lost, for a nightmare is born of the darkest injustice and will brook no mercy. But hope remains. The curse may yet be lifted. Some brave soul may yet defy the nightmare that once was Deborah Comenius. In the meeting house in New Eden, she awaits their return. You're awake. Who are you? 